Hello everybody. Happy Monday morning. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and you might have followed along on my channel because I make all kinds of t-shirt quilts and many of you have seen videos where I use Inkscape to design my t-shirt quilts right here on the computer. So the awesome thing about Inkscape is one that it's free and two that you can design your quilt right here on the computer or save it and print it out uh, all nice and professional on paper, right? So many of you have already downloaded Inkscape and you've been watching the, the tutorials and following along and I've gotten a couple questions and I thought I would share this tutorial or, or more so an Inkscape tip. When working with the grid sets and designing your quilts on Inkscape, okay? So uh, I've gotten a couple of questions uh, and they usually go like, uh, hey Lisa, I'm designing my quilt and I keep accidentally hitting the grid set and moving the grid set instead of one of my blocks and then I have to move all my blocks again. How can I fix this? And it is a super frustrating little uh, thing that happens, especially when you've got lots of blocks already lined up perfectly, right? So I'm going to show you an easy fix, okay? Uh, I'm going to pull up Inkscape. I'm going to link Inkscape down in the description box in case you want to check it out. And uh, again, I do have several video tutorials here on my channel uh, designing quilts using Inkscape. So you might want to check that out if you haven't seen them. So let me share my screen real quick and I'm going to scroll over to uh, Inkscape. Let me open up Inkscape and that's going to take a second to open up. Mm. There we go. Sorry, y'all. It's Monday. And I'm trying to get in the swing of things. All right, so Inkscape is open upon default. Y'all always hear me say this. I always like to change that default box that's on the screen. That's our piece of virtual paper, right? So I'm going to scroll up to the top menu, hit File and Document Properties, and we're going to change that box to the U.S. letter size. Did you see the box change a little bit? So now if we wanted to print this off, we're not going to be cutting off any of our grid uh, and we're going to design it right on the virtual piece of paper, right? So U.S. letter. That's the first thing I always do. So now let's import one of the grid sets, right? So let's go back up to file and go to import. And let me find one of my grid sets. Here we go. It's going to take a second. Grid sets. Grid sets. There we go. <laughs> I have a million files. Let's work with the two inch grid set, right? I have all different kinds of sizes of grids, but the two inch is my favorite one. And we're gonna click on that and hit open. All right, so when we import a, a PDF document, this box pops up. Now this grid set is six pages and we only want to work with one of them, right? So let's work with the crib size sheet. So let's change select page number two. That's the crib size. Let's go ahead and work with that one. So there it is. There's the crib size. Now uh, on the right side of my screen, I have several boxes already open because I work with these features all the time. There are several places to find the features that I'm gonna be working with, including this top uh, menu. Uh, and also within the very, very top menu, like object, path, edit, all of those. These functions can be found in a lot of places. But the first one we're going to work with is align and distribute. That's this button right here on this menu. I've already opened it up. And if you've already opened it up, you'll find it on the right side as a shortcut. So let's open up align and distribute. And... Uh, we're going to align this to the page that's on the screen, center and center, and there you go. Now as a shortcut, uh, I like to zoom in to the page, so you'll see me click on this button quite a bit, zoom to fit page on window, and that just brings in the full page closer. So let's just start uh, designing real quick, right? I'm just gonna draw uh, several boxes, some blue ones, some red ones, an orange one, 
a yellow one, and let's do one more, and we will make that a gray one. Uh, so let's just start moving these on the grid. So let's say at this point you've already made your boxes. I've showed you how to do that in a video. Um, you've already inventoried your shirts, and these are the shirts that you're using to make your quilt, right? So let's start moving them on the grid. Now one thing I did want to show you is that uh, the opacity level on my squares, you can find that under the fill and stroke menu, uh, is lowered from 100% down. You can make it uh, as see-through as you want, but I like it to not be 100% so that I can see the grid through my box, right? If it's already, if it's at 100%, you can't see that grid through that box. So I just like to lower it a little bit. And let's just define this box shape a little bit. Let's move in the red one right next to it. Right, here's the fun part. You get to design all the blocks on your quilt. Keep in mind that using this grid, each one of these boxes represents a finished two inch by two inch section. So let's just click on this red one. It's four boxes across, it's eight inches finished, right? When we cut out this block, we'll cut it eight and a half by eight and a half, right? And let's just move this one in here. Oh, let's just move it. We're just pretending, so let's just do this. And let's move this orange one in here. So, so far I've been really lucky that I haven't accidentally clicked on the grid set, right? And moved that around. But once you start filling up all of these uh, spaces on your grid, you're gonna notice that it's really easy to accidentally click on the grid set and move that instead of one of your blocks, right? And then when you do that, you have to go through and move your blocks again or try to get it lined up perfectly. It can be really frustrating. So all of this to say, I have an easy way to fix this, an easy solution for you. So let me uh, just click on this grid set. Easy way to click on it if you've already started designing your quilt is just to go up to the title of it and click on that. It selects your grid set. Now let's go up to the uh, top menu we're going to select on Object with our grid set selected and Object Properties. When you do, the Object Properties box is going to open up on the right side of your screen, right? Do you see it at the very top? It says Object Properties. Now there's a bunch of things in here that we're not going to mess with, but I want you to look right here. There's a box that says Hide. And right to the right of it, it says lock. If we click on lock and hit set, guess what? We can click on this grid set all we want. We are not moving this grid set at all. So we can move these blocks around and move them and move them and move them. And you will never click on the grid set and move that. It just locks it right there on the page. So you're ready to design away, design away. Let's say because we've designed this right on the page, we want to print it, right? And work in paper form or maybe take it with us uh, to another room, whatever. We're going to go to File and Save As. Let's put this on the desktop just for easy finding. We're going to call it Monday's Demo. If you want to print your grid set and work in paper from here, you're going to go to um, Save as Type, and I like to save it as a PDF document, and hit Save. And when this box opens up, I just say OK. So now we can go right over to our desktop, and here's the PDF. I can print this off and study it or work right from the paper form, right? Well, let's say uh, you're still designing and you have to leave, whoops, not that one, <laughs> and you have to leave for the day, right, and you want to pick back up tomorrow, uh, but you're not done yet, or you want to work straight from this uh, Inkscape document just like I do and not print it off at all. So 
Instead of saving as a PDF, we're going to go up and we're going to hit File and we're going to say Save As. We're going to put this on the desktop as well. We're going to call it Monday's Demo. And instead of changing the Save As type right down here, we're going to leave it as an Inkscape SVG. You don't change that at all. And we're going to hit Save. So let's just uh, close that, right? And let's say it's the next day and we're ready to start working on our quilt. We can open up Inkscape. Again, the first thing I like to do is go change that property document size to US letter. And uh, we'll go back up to file. We're going to import our document, our little quilt. And uh, there's Monday's demo. It is an Inkscape. And we're going to open that right up. So there we go. I like to center it right on that page. So again, align and distribute. Center to page. And one thing you'll notice anytime you reopen your file is that Inkscape has grouped everything together, right? We cannot uh, select any of the objects within this file yet. It just grouped them all together when you saved it. So with everything selected, you'll see one solid box dotted line all the way around. I'm going to right click on my mouse. And from this menu, I'm going to hit ungroup. When you do that, you'll notice that all of the indiv individual blocks on your quilt grid now have blocks or lines around them, right? So now we can select and move. I don't know why uh, sometimes my menu stays on the screen like that. But you'll also notice that with this particular file, it has saved the setting of locking the grid. So you won't have to do that every single time you work on this particular quilt design. Uh, but it did save the setting for this particular file and you cannot click on the grid. But you can click on these blocks and move them all around and not have to worry about moving that grid. So I hope you have found this helpful. Let me switch back here. There we go. I hope that tip, that's a lot of information, <laughs> especially on a Monday morning. But I hope you found that helpful. Uh, and uh, if it helped you, I would love to hear about it down in the description box below. And if you have any other questions, let me know down in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you later. Have fun designing. Bye.